Greetings, Mathies. This is the beginning of probability, and maybe you've seen some of this before, um, but uh, I'm gonna, I want to try to do a comprehensive job just in case you haven't seen probability before. Uh, maybe you need to fast forward through this because some of it's uh, the basics that you already know, and maybe some of it, you, you, it, it might take you a little bit to um, bring it all together. But I want you solid on this because <laughs> probability is one of those beguiling things that starts easy and then turns evil once you get to like Z scores. Anyway, um, <laughs> I like this as an intro. <laughs> if you choose uh, an answer to this question randomly, what's the chance that you'll get it correct? Randomly is going to be like you have a one out of four probability. So it seems like the probability should be one out of four, which is 25%. Right, but there are two 25% answers. So really, if the answer should be 25%, then you have a 50% chance of getting it right. But now you should choose 50%, which is back to one fourth and 25%. So is it is it 50 or is it 25? I want I want to leave that for you to to ponder. It's not 60. Let's just leave it at that. Not 60. Is it 25 or is it 50? All right, moving on. So um, probability is just the chance that something or something will or won't happen. Um, it's not binary. If there's not just yes, it'll happen or no, there's like a continuum. And uh, did you hear the joke about the statistician? Probably. It's about probability. Um, so definitely won't happen. It has to happen. There, there's this massive continuum in between, and there are very few things that are right here or right here. Um, most things are pretty close to one or pretty close to zero, but uh, especially when you get into like subatomic physics, pretty neat. Anyway, uh, we talk about outcomes is what happens in an experiment. An experiment can be anything, flipping a coin, rolling a die. We will initially start thinking about probability as easy experiments like that. I know that in science you think about an experiment as something bigger, but um, we're going to start small. Frequency is just the number of times the thing that you want comes out, and relative frequency is that as a percentage of the total trials. Okay, we've got sample space, which is all of the things that can happen, so, and we can write sample space like sample space is just all of the outcomes, right? And we can do that in a couple of different ways. So I'll show you a couple of different ways. You can list the outcomes. If you're flipping a coin, it can be heads or tails. But if you're flipping two coins, it can be heads, 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 tails, or tails, tails. I know that there are two avenues for that. You can get a tails and then a heads, and or a heads and then a tails. But we still list all of the outcomes. There's just three things that could happen if you don't care about order. Uh, another way you can do it is with a grid. Say this is coin one, this is coin two. Here's what's possible, and we represent them on a grid as dots. This is a heads on coin one and a tails on coin two. This is two tails, this is two heads, etc. We like these because it helps us visualize the probabilities. Once you have this, you can say, oh, how many different ways can you get a mix of a head and a tail. You go, oh, this is a head and a tail, and so is this. So two out of the total of, oh, one, two, three, four. Two out of the four, so half of the time you'll get a mix. Another way you can do this is as a tree diagram, where you say this is coin one and this is coin two. That's a little challenging for some people because they want to like double up on each coin, but each of these is this, is this doubled, right? This is this happening, whether you got a head or a tail first, you're going to have a probability of flipping heads and tails again unchanged. And so we list the possible outcomes as this one is heads, heads, this one is heads and then tails, this one is tails and then heads, tails, tails. So here's some uh, sample spaces. Maybe pause me and try to think of what the sample spaces represent, three different things. So this first piece to me looks like you're flipping a coin one and then regardless of what happens there, you're flipping a coin again 
and regardless of what happens there, you're flipping the coin again. So you could get heads, 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 or mix all the way up to tails, tails, tails. So this is three coins flipping. Or flipping the same coin three times, it doesn't really matter. You can th it's, sometimes it's easiest to think about fling, 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 and see what happens to each one. Sometimes it's easiest to think about flipping the same coin three times. This is rolling two dice. You can get ones, you can get a one, three, you can get a you know mix of things. So this is three dice, or sorry, two dice. And this is a draw from a deck of cards. Here's all the things that come out. Yeah. Uh, just for those of you that aren't card players, there's 52 cards in a deck. Unless your little brother has eaten one or something like that. Then there's 51. All right. So theoretical probability is what should happen. It's not necessarily what does happen when you play the game. So... When we talk about theoretical probability, it's what you want over the total. Or maybe it's not what you want, but what you're interested in. Because you can get a probability of, like, getting cancer. And that's not what you want, but it's what you're interested in. So what's the probability? Okay. So in general, we have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, marbles in here. And so the probability of picking red, we write as PR or, or P red is five out of those seven. Therefore, the probability of picking blue is two out of the seven. And you can either do that by counting up the blues, or you can do that by saying there's a there's a 100% probability of picking something. I know that the probability of the red plus the probability of blue should be one. So if you don't want to count up the blues, you can find the probability of this and subtract from one to get the other one. Right? It's called complementary. It's not because they're nice to you. <laughs> Uh, but it's because they complement each other in that they add up to one. So the probability of getting reds and the probability of not getting reds is one because that's all there. You can either get a red marble or not. Okay, moving on. So this is grids, looking at the same sort of thing with grids. And here are two dice die rolling. One die, two dice. Uh, here's die number one and die number two. And all these dots represent everything that can happen. So this one represents a six on die one and a four on die two. So it would be six on die one and a four on die two. This one, right? That's what's happening. And instead of drawing little pictures, we draw a dot. And that helps us to be able to visualize things like this. I want to I want to roll a five and a six. You you roll a five and a six for me, and you have no more math homework for the rest of your life. Uh, do you care if you get the six and the five or five first in this? No, nobody cares. You just want a, a five and also a six. Oh, and here's another way to do it. Uh, so this was a five first and then a six, and this one is a six first and then a five. Either way, you're happy. So two out of these, how many are here? Oh, six by six. So two out of 36 is your probability. Simplify it, baby. Simplify it. Uh, exactly one six. Uh, be careful with that because these are all the sixes and these are all the sixes on the other one, but this one's overlapped, so this is not exactly one six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten out of thirty six, uh, which simplifies also five out of eighteen. Cool. Last but certainly not least, sum of no more than eight. I want a sum of eight, so I want no more than eight. So eight is okay, right? So like you roll me, you roll me a sum a sum of nine, and you have double homework for the rest of your life, and you think that's bad uh, math homework. So we want no more than eight. So we want not nine, essentially. So let's find the nines. Uh, here's four by four. That we're good there. Here's three and s three and five. That's eight. Here's two and six. That's eight. So this line is all eight. And so this line is all nine, this line's all 10, etc. So we really want, we really want a sum of no more. We want these, cool, and not those. Now, we could count all these up, but wouldn't it be easier to count these up? Say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you'd say, I want not I want not 10 out of 18. 10 out of 18, oh sorry, 10 out of 36 times, I'm unhappy. Well, that means that, on the other hand, uh, 26 out of 36, I am happy because they're compliments. 
because we could say 100% of the time something has to happen that's got to equal these two. It's got to be 10 out of 36 plus whatever's left over, I'm not sure, out of 36. And we can solve for this one. Ends up being 20, 26 out of 36, if for some reason you couldn't see that, like your eyes were crossed or whatever. Just getting the whole tour of Shea Gorkevich. Uh, we're switching it up. This is the map room. We have Taha'a and the Tuamotus Islands. Um, there's a story behind this piece, but it involves me being a terrible son and forcing my mom onto a Six Flags amusement park ride, which she hasn't forgiven me yet for. Anyway, mostly it's just to sh get you into using a table of outcomes for probability. I edited the uh, prompt because it just made it more fun. So people are exiting our new ride. We're asked if they were emotionally traumatized or not, i.e. cried. Um, and we want to see the probability of finding people uh, for, for each situation. So what's the probability that somebody cried on the ride? Well, these are all of the people that cried on the ride, and those are all of the people that rode the rides. So 47 out of 130 are those who cried on the ride. That's pretty straightforward. It gets a little more challenging. If we want to find somebody, we want to find all the kids that cried. So I want a child and that they cried. Well, these are all of the children that cried. These are all the adults that cried, but I'm not interested. I want and, a, a child and crying. So I want 17 out of the total, out of the 130. So I think that should be 17 out of 130. Should be the probability that they're both a child and cried on the ride. True? True. Cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> dislike the ride. Uh, and then for the last one, th um, I want to know that if they're an adult, given that he or she cried on the ride. This given that means you start out with that. We start knowing that they cried on the ride. So you bring all the criers. You take all the people who have like over by the clean Xboxes. They're like, that was emotionally traumatizing. These are all criers. <clears throat> I want to know that uh, what's the probability that they're an adult. Well, I'm only looking at this piece now. So 30 were adults out of the total of 47 criers. I think that's our probability. Cool. All right. So table of outcomes. Um, it's a challenge to try to figure out how to combine these probabilities. And so one of the ways to do that is with... Uh, I, I think about the, the coin flip. So if you have a flip, flifty for 50% chance of flipping a, uh, heads, shouldn't you have a 100% of flipping twice? Don't you just add them up? No. Um, and you do this with a tree diagram to help s see it, right? So this is flip one, and if we um, do this twice, like you're going to flip the coin the second time regardless, has the same probability. This happens half of the time, 0.5. This happens the other half of the time. On your second flip, this happens half of the time, and this happens half of the time. Um, and so when we've looked at the table of outcomes before, we saw that flipping a coin, you could get four different things. Uh, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails, tails. So there's four different outcomes, and... Here, we get those same four different... So each one of these has a one-fourth of a chance happening, 0.25. So you know that heads-heads is has a probability of 0 0.25, or a quarter. And heads-tails is 0 0.25, one out of four times. Same thing, 0 0.25. So how do we combine half and half and get 0 0.25? Half and half get 0 0.25? You multiply them. Right, so you take this branch and you multiply along the branch. You say 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. It's half times half, and you get one fourth. Same thing here. You go, oh, half of the time I'll get a tails, and then half of the time after that, I'll get the heads again. And so this is half times half. So you multiply along the branches to get this probability. Oh, and guess what? Ha a quarter times a quarter, or sorry, quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter. If you add them all up, you get, should get one because 100% of the time, something's going to happen. One of these is going to happen. So uh, let's try that in a little slower fashion. I'm trying to find a decent speed so you're not bored. Uh, but you can fast forward me if you're bored. Ha <laughs> ha. You can't do that in class, can you? 
So independent events, um, one one event doesn't affect the other. When you flip a coin, it that regardless if you get heads or tails, it doesn't affect the next flip and the next flip and the next flip. So same sort of thing. Let's say one we're doing two things: we're rolling a die and flipping a coin. With your roll a die, get your head out of the way, there, You could get a one, two, three, four, four, five, six, right? And we're not really sure which one we're going to get, but regardless of what we're going to get, we'll flip a coin afterwards and we'll get heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. What's hiding? Is there something hiding back there? Either way, um, so there's a bunch of different outcomes, and we want to know, I'm still here, we want to know uh, what's the probability of getting a two and then flipping a heads. So here's the two, and then here's heads. So this if we can, you could maybe want to think of it like here's the branches, like that. Probability of the two, it's supposed to be purple, the probability of the two is one out of six, and the probability of uh, flipping heads is one out of two. So to find the overall probability for that happening, you'd multiply along those branches, one sixth times one half, if I have it back there, and you get the one twelfth. Right, so you'd say one sixth times one half gives you the one twelfth. Twelfth, neat. Um, okay, so uh, da, 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 da. only half of the first events and half of the second events are favorable, so we can calculate uh, this second part. Right? Um, if so, if you're trying to find the probability of an even and probability of flipping heads, so I want I want both of those to happen. So we could do this. We could we could say if you flip an even number, if you roll an even number and also flip heads, you don't have any homework for the rest of your life. And that's fine, but you don't care which way we do that. So evens are this and this and this. And then afterwards, once you have that, you need to flip heads, heads, heads for no homework to occur, right? You need to get evens and heads. So you don't care if you get two in heads, four in heads, six in heads. That doesn't matter. And like we calculated before, this is one sixth and one half. So this is one twelfth. And therefore, also, this should be one twelfth and this should be one twelfth. And if you look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve things that can happen. Right? And so therefore, that makes sense that one twelfth of the time you'll get this branch because it's one out of twelve branches this branch, one out of 12 branches, this branch, one out of 12 branches. So in total, there's one, two, three different ways that you can get no homework for the rest of your life. So that means there's three of the 12 different ways. And that's why you get three twelfths of the time is the probability that's favorable for you, right? Um, and three twelfths happens to be one fourth. Neat. Neat. In your formula booklet, they use independent events. If you want A and B to happen, they say probability of A times probability of B. They use this upside down U, which is the intersection. Uh, intersection is a fancy way of saying and. So sometimes they, you see that instead of the U. I'm back. You're like, ah, okay. Can you put your head back over there, Gorkevich? All right, moving on. Uh, dependent events, one event affects the other. So, for example, you're pulling ba uh, marbles out of a bag. It's just like a classic, easy to remember way to th think about this. Um, one event affects the other because if you take the if you take the marble out and you throw it away, or they're jelly beans, you eat them, uh, then you have fewer in the in the bag. So we're talking about non-replacement. Right? You're not replacing the marble. If you're like, ah, uh, and you put the marble back in, you haven't changed anything. So um, we need not replacement. Um, okay, let's see. Maybe I should write that down. No replacement. Great. So if you try to, we want to find the probability of pulling a red out of bag one and a blue marble out of bag two. They start out with the same probabilities. So the red out of bag one is going to be one, two, three, four, five out of seven, right? So this will be five out of seven. I need that to happen. And this comma means and, and if I want and to happen, I multiply the two probabilities, right? 
So and multiply, and I want a blue out of bag two. They're essentially the same bag. So this one is sort of like like with replacement. So this is like this will be two out of seven. We'd multiply them together, and you'd get ten out of forty nine. Right, whatever that probability is. This you could think of the same thought experiment as with replacement. Uh, we could think about that as with replacement as if this wasn't here and instead of throwing the marble away, we just put the marble back in and it doesn't change anything. Yeah. Um, if you don't replace it, if you end up throwing it away, things look different. So if you pull a red marble out and throw it away, well, I already got a little arrow on that. We pull it out. The probability for the first one is this same probability. It's still 5 out of 7. And we're going to multiply by the next one. Um, so if we take this out and throw it away or eat it or whip it at a freshman, um, the probability that we're going to pull a blue is changed. There's still two in there, but we've changed the overall denominator. It's no longer seven. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? And then when you multiply across, you'll get a different value. You get 10 out of 42, right? which is slightly different because we've changed the second one. Okay, so I've got a box with some tickets in it, and two tickets are, are randomly selected from one box without replacement. So if you're not sure, like, draw a picture. Here's my red tickets, one, two, three, four, and here's my yellow tickets. I'll make them orange. No, I'll make them green, because for colorblind fun, one, two. Okay, so two tickets are randomly selected from one box without replacement. So. I know you grab two tickets, but like at the same at the same time. But really, like think about reaching and grabbing one ticket, reaching and grabbing another ticket. Right, one's got to happen, and then the other one's happen. Well, so what's the probability that both are red? Well, I so I want both to be red. So pull us. What's the probability that you get a red the first time? Well, it's uh, four out of six. And and at the same time, right? I want two tickets. So and at the same time, I'm gonna have to multiply. I want the other one to be red. So I know that you could you like imagine grabbing them at different times instead of grabbing two at the same time. Even if you go in and grab two at the same time, your fingers touch one at, at first, right? So there's if we got this one, there's still three reds out of but we we pulled one, so we've changed the the overall probability. So now this is five, right? And I think that simplifies to two fifths. Yeah. Okay. So there's the there's the fractions. Multiply them together. Simplify to two fifths. Cool. I like it. Um, coin and a die are tossed simultaneously. But bing. Uh, determine the probability of heads and three. Well, I, I want the heads outcome to be uh, is one half, and the three. There's only one three out of those six. So I think this is one half times one six. I think this is one twelfth. Um, it's this is independent because the coin doesn't care what the dice is doing and the dice doesn't care what the coin is doing but this one does right this pull affected this one um so that's dependent neat all right so <laughs> uh with and without replacement here's a couple of examples just to give you some um ideas about like just which one's which. Uh, sampling with replacement, the observing the properties um, like doesn't change the group. Uh, so putting it back into the group um, and reselecting. Um, and without replacement is if you like if you throw away the marble or the jelly bean and you change the initial conditions. So uh, playing Paper, rock, scissors uh, sounds like with replacement because your probability doesn't really change each time. It's it's pretty random. I like that paper, rock, scissors with Edward Scissorhands and the uh, the thing. Um, pulling two chocolates out of the box at the same time and seeing which one's toothpaste toothpaste flavored is without replacement because you're pulling one out, eating it, and then and then pulling a new one out. Uh, Two aces out of the deck when playing poker, I think is without replacement because you're not 
putting it back in because you're pulling two out. Spinning a green on a spinner is going to be with replacement because it's the same each time. And checking pressurization of Coke cans in the factory is probably without replacement because you grab the can and you open it up and see if it's pressurized. So you're not replacing it each time you're changing the probability a little bit. So let's give that a shot with these. Here's an example. I want um, a probability of blue than a red given this setup. I've got two blue marbles in a box, three reds and a yellow, right? So this is the setup. What's the probability that I get a blue than a red? Well, it depends on if you put it back. So this is an example with replacement. If we want blue than a red, we pull out blue. The blue was, I have two blues out of six. So that's this gets me onto the blue branch. And then I want a red. Uh, if I'm replacing it, I put it back in and I have three out of six. And that's this. And then you can just multiply along the branches. So you multiply this, you multiply that, and it'll give you blue and red. Probability is one six when you clean it up. It's six out of 36, right? Six out of 36. Uh, if you don't replace them, you there's two out of six blues. You're starting with the same initial conditions, right? And if you do pull the blue, now you eat it or throw it at a freshman. Probably shouldn't say that. Uh, and now your probability of red changes because you have, you have three reds, but only five left over. So, or five total, sorry. And so you can multiply those together and simplify and you get one-fifth, right? You have a different probability. Um, and a lower probability because you don't have as many uh, total in the second part. All right, you try it. Same setup, but try two yellows and also same color. See what you get. Pause me until then. Okay, so two yellows with replacement. If you do replace them, the probability of getting a yellow the first time, so this would be P yellow, the probability of yellow plus the probability, or sorry, uh, times the probability of a yellow, right, is, is two yellows. You multiply them together. The probability of that happening is one out of six. And if you replace it, the second one is one out of six, so the probability is one out of 36. Um, without replacement, if you pull the yellow, if you get the yellow the first time, it's one out of six. And then the second time you throw the yellow away, there's no more yellows, right? So you can't get the yellow twice if you've eaten the, you know, if there's one yellow jelly bean and you've eaten it, you're not going to get a second one. Sorry, I tell my daughter that when she cries about not getting the yellow jelly bean. So zero. Um, and then the same thing we can do with uh, same color. And so the same color would look like this. Uh, we have a couple of different things that could happen. Same color would be probability of two blue plus the probability, like, I'm happy if I get two blue, probability of two reds, I'm happy. Uh, there's no two yellows. That's not true, Gorkevich. You can get two yellows if you replace. So I just want to find the, the probability of two blues or two reds. Since I'm happy with both, this probability plus this probability is good for me. So you add them up. So probability of two blues with replacement, if you're going to replace them, is one out of six uh, times one out of, oh, sorry, sorry, blues, uh, two out of six. Two out of six times two out of six. That's good for me. And also two reds, so three out of six times three out of six. Yeah, so four out of four out of thirty six. Thirty six plus what are those threes? Plus nine out of thirty six. So thirteen out of thirty six. Simplify. Um, if you do not replace them, then it looks a little different. But I'm still getting trying to get two two blues, or two reds. And I don't care how I do that, so I just add them up. So the without replacement would be uh, two blues would be two out of six for the first one. If I do get it, now there's only one out of five because I've eaten the blue marble. Or, the plus sign is an or, we can do that with reds by first getting three out of six gets me a red. And then two out of five gets me the um, second red. 
So multiply those, add, and simplify. Here's the trees to help you maybe visualize that. Like that. Um, oh, I guess don't follow. Don't follow the uh, green. Follow this. Let's see. Same color. Same color would be like red, red, right? Or blue, blue. Oh, I was wrong. Same color with replacement. We could have gotten yellows. We could have gotten yellows. Why didn't you tell me? I, I did tell you. We could have done it. We could have gotten two yellows with replacement. I missed that. It's one six times one one six. So add one thirty six to our previous assessment. Yikes. All right. Yeah. So there's nine out of thirty six. There's four out of thirty six, and one more out of thirty six. So fourteen out of thirty six instead of 13. Quack. Cool. All right, that's the ball game. Try some of the practice problems and sorry it was a little long, but intro to probability basics. I'm hoping that you know a lot of that already. Cool. Bye.